Welcome. My name is Alkin, and I'd like to share some experiences with, with Tess. A um, little bit about myself. I am a senior technical manager at Planet Scale. I am one of the maintainers for the Vitesse project. I'm an open source database evangelist, previously working at Parcona, Pythion, and some of the uh, background in enterprise. And I'm also an avid sailor. And uh, if you want to talk about sailing, please do find me on Instagram or Twitter. A little bit about Planet Scale because of the relations between the Vitesse project and uh, and the company is founded in 2018 by the co-creators of Vites at YouTube, later on Google. Currently about 45 to 50 employees uh, located in California, and it's a complete remote team due to pandemic. On the Vitesse project, what is Vitesse? Question can be answered by its database clustering system for horizontal scaling of MySQL or MariaDB databases. Why we say that it's not a database, but it's a framework that actually manages the databases that exist. So we actually take advantage of the both technologies on the framework and the database backend side. Vitesse does not make any changes to the existing running databases like MySQL or MariaDB. It's a CNCF graduated project. In fact, it is one of the first database projects in CNCF, very important. That's an open source and with an Apache tool that all license, and it has contributors from around the community with the large users of BTS. Today's agenda is gonna be an architectural overview of BTS. We're gonna talk about what BTS is, so you have an idea. And we test use cases, a little bit on sharding, and where we can actually meet MariaDB as this is a MariaDB dev room. And thank you for inviting me over. On the Vitesse architecture basics is a, we actually enable the, the database infrastructure op operations to be more smooth and coming from single end. And the glossary for the terminology in, in, the, in the Vitesse world is a key space is a logical database, whether it's sharded or unsharded, you would actually have a key space with an ID and a primary index and a, and a test index, which points to an index. So there is a little bit of an additional terms that applies for the VTS, which we can explain a little bit more on the proxy server is a VT gate. A VT tablet is a backend server that actually works like a sidecar. There's also a topology data store, which can be managed by etcd, zookeeper, or console. Consider a common replication cluster where we have a, a primary and replicas. VT tablet attaches to the MySQL D process in each tablet and, um, and uh, manages the MySQL D in the backend. So these coupled database structure with a replication cluster is a tablet. And in production, you would have multiple clusters and VTGate manages them. So if we go back in time over here, each MySQL server is assigned to a VT tablet. And then each MySQL VT tablet is managed by a VTGate, where actually it's a stateless proxy. It doesn't manage, but it actually uh, routes the traffic to the VT tablets. And you can have multiple VT gates. You're not bound to single one of them. So there's no single point of failure. Also, you can scale out the number of connections and that points to the clusters that you have in the backend. VT gate also uh, routes the traffic to the correct clusters depending on the sharding scheme. Since we are intending to shard our data set, using Vitesse, eventually, you would have to know where your data sits. So you don't have to maintain it yourself, but the Vitesse maintains, maintains by VTGate. And then the queries are rooted based on the schema and the sharding scheme. In this example, let's say we have a commerce database, which is a key space, 
and then it's sharded there's an in, also an inter, internal uncharted this is important so you don't have to shard everything but you can still have an uncharted key spaces in your topology and a query comes in that points to the key space and vt gates know where that customer id range is Topo is another component in this architecture, actually stores the state of the schemas, shards, sharding scheme and tablets, can be used by etcd. We currently actually use etcd. There are others who use console or zookeeper. We don't recommend console for some reasons, uh, but you may choose to do so. And, um, and this has a very small data set and it's mostly cached by the VT gate. Uh, VTCTLD is another uh, component that's in our architecture, which is a control daemon and runs the ad hoc operations to the database and API server and uh, read writes the topo, which also operates on tablets. So these are the uh, components of that. And then, and then Vitesse topology knows all the schemas, shards, clusters, and it keeps a state of the latest and the greatest information because in, in the real production environment, these will be changing and you would need to keep them up to date as much as possible. So with this control plane not only includes these components, but also includes some of the normal database operations you would do. So in, in normal production environment, you would have some sort of a proxy server, which is covered by VT gate. You would actually have a backup and recovery, which is covered by the VT uh, gate and, and uh, VT CTLD at Vitesse using backups and recovers, uh, recoveries. And th in this case, we could actually drive extra backup for it for different data stores. Integrated failover, that is actually known as an orchestrator. And in which, in which case for the Vitesse uh, topology, it is called VTORC. And sharding schemes that you can actually horizontal or vertical that you actually apply to that. There is an also advanced replication options, which actually allows you to replicate from one uh, key space to the other and 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 v stream there is going to be an online ddl operation which is an experimental stage at this point but we will be driving ghost or percono toolkits online schema change tools and there is also more for that in summary if you have an application that's actually driving through a load balancer you can point to vt gate and a topology server knows your sharding scheme and points to the to the tablets that you have uh, your your data set. Let's go over uh, for the supported backend data. This is a very popular question that is being asked in the open source community: what databases and what engines it supports. Uh, Vitesse is a very MySQL centric framework and it it works perfectly fine with with mysql 5.7 5, 5 and uh, and it's slowly being migrated to 8 and it also works on on mysql 8 compatible and uh, we already have very large um, users in the community that are heavily invested in the mysql backend for um, hundreds of thousands of shards and also it is known that it works for MariaDB for the compatibility purpose. The frequently asked question whether it will work for PostgreSQL or not, it will not work for PostgreSQL. There is going to be a need for another uh, set of um, implementation that needs to be managed outside of the uh, MySQL uh, infrastructure. And uh, let's talk about um, we test use cases and sharding. So in many cases, what we see is not always um, drop-in replacement for your entire application. In some cases, your application does only needs to scale out on certain um, parts. And either you have the entire application pointed to Vitesse or keep and chart it and unchart it um, key spaces in your topology, or you just scale out where, it's, where you need to. And also you can point 
and, and create a link to your existing MySQL topology and use just uh, Vitesse as your management of your, of your MySQL topology without ever changing anything on your backend. You could do sharding and resharding. That's the key point over here. So in normal cases, once you shard, that's it. There's no actually coming back from, from sharding. With Vitesse, since it knows how you sharded, it's able to reshard or unshard your data sets into different key spaces. And Vitesse, if you scaled out with Vitesse and simplified and, and uh, minimized uh, your, your backup and recovery scenarios by keeping a smaller data set, this is actually a big advantage for when we see a terabytes of data in a single database and, uh, and having issues for uh, both backup and recovery scenarios. There are some other use cases that you can think of, obviously, but uh, these are the things that I uh, just came to my mind. Where we come to the MariaDB compatibility, MariaDB, there are no extensive work has been done, as far as I know. And uh, we are looking for contributors and users. Uh, at this point, we, don't, we have not received much uh, feedback on uh, MariaDB usage. And MySQL, uh, MariaDB, compatibility for 10.4 is still pending and there's an open issue at GitHub and uh, I will be following up with Fort VariaDB and the community, see if there's anything we can do to improve that area. So for more resources, please visit Vitesse.io and uh, there's a user guide and docs over there. It's an open source, I can uh, rephrase that, and uh, it's open and, and you can see the code. If you are willing to contribute, please see the contributor guide at the document. And there's also a Vitesse Slack where you can actually join and create um, a, a discussion. I can create a MariaDB room if, that, if it doesn't exist and, and we can discuss further on that. Let's take a look at how we can drive MariaDB through Vitesse. Okay, uh, now we're at the demo section. I have built a local Docker image. As I mentioned earlier, there are a couple of options that you can test Vitesse against MariaDB. One of them is, is to build a Docker image. The other one is, is building locally, comp uh, compiling from source. The, the third option is the, the Vitesse operator. There's an open source Vitesse operator that you can test against Minikube or your, your favorite Kubernetes environment like GKE. In this example, I want to demonstrate um, a simple um, use case for scaling out MariaDB database using Vitesse. So um, the Docker image already built to, to save time, but I want to show you uh, the Docker file uh, over here, and there's going to be some dependencies installed. And we install, um, set those dependencies per the flavor of, of the backend engine we use, and then, and then build up a cluster that is example of, of this uh, demonstration. And um, over here, we also have the, the file for the installing local dependencies, and, uh, and, and we use etcd for the, the topo server. And uh, I will run uh, this uh, Docker image and, uh, and build a simple e-commerce application database. So what does this do is, um, let's say we have um, an e-commerce database that is struggling to, to scale. And it has an, an order table. It keeps customer and product information uh, for the sake of this, this example. And, um, and then we actually uh, want to, want to uh, not only shard, but also uh, manage this environment uh, without having to go um, any downtime. So basically, we're going to do a, a, a small migration over here against the schema. Uh, the initial, initial, um, initial database that is uh, simply unsharded, and, um, and, and uh, we want to uh, experiment uh, sharding over it. Uh, before getting into that, uh, I want to show you uh, what we are running against. Uh, we are uh, building this uh, image against the MariaDB version 10.3. And uh, if I connect to uh, VTGate, which in this case uh, is, is, our, is our proxy for the backend instances, and uh, take a look at uh, uh, the version over here, it's the MariaDB, and uh, we are actually in the Vitesse um, this client space that actually connects. And then uh, we have uh, uh, different commands over here that you're not familiar with the um, um, command line over here. If I said show Vitesse tablets, uh, 
uh, it would give me an example for the uh, the cell that is the the zone and the key space which is the schema and the database uh, there's no sharding it's uncharted there are different tablet types of course there's a, a primary replica and a read only um, tablets that is attached for this uh, cluster so uh, there is a little bit of an ex extended um, information over here but basically it mimics a, a primary replica scenario that that uh, you would normally run in your in your cluster uh, let's move forward with uh, with the example over here we have some um, pre uh, set scripts over here which you can find this under uh, vitess io uh, user guides and uh, there are different examples for both uh, local install operator and and then you can run through this this scenario to um, experiment yourself and I want to show you, continue uh, on this one, showing the customer tablets. Basically, in order to uh, get from commerce to the customer, we need to uh, initialize a, a new new shard. And uh, I will run this, and then, and then it will create a new customer tablets for us so that we can migrate our commerce database, which is unsharded, to a customer key space, which will be sharded eventually. And uh, it's going to initialize. Basically, this is a driver of, of uh, instances. As the database instance is coming up, we can connect and, uh, and, and basically um, see those tablets coming up. And um, this, uh, this operation will bring a new cluster, which is completely configured uh, automatically uh, in order for us to, to continue our example. OK. Yeah. OK. And next up is, is to um, moving the tables to the new um, key space. As you can see over here from the script, I don't want to just run it so it's not hidden, a VTCTL client with the move tables uh, from commerce to customer, it will actually migrate this, this, this over to that uh, new key space. And I will run this. And it executed already. And, um, and then next up, will be um, moving the, these um, uh, switching reads uh, from commerce to customer key space. So basically, we're currently uh, switching reads that are coming into the uh, commerce key space into the, uh, the replicas that, that, that are, those are built for the new customer key space. OK. And I will run this. And then a traffic switcher, which is our VT gate. VT gate actually knows about uh, all this. Topo server keeps track of all this information. And it can actually take all the incoming traffic and, and, and migrate into the, um, the new space. Now that this will look a little bit uh, awkward in how to visualize, we have some web um, interface that you can connect to. I don't want to get into that too much because we have a new um, uh, VT admin um, uh, UI is coming up very soon, and uh, that is uh, built by our uh, contributors at Slack, and uh, we'll be announcing th that soon. Um, okay, let's continue with the with the example over here. Uh, so now that we switched reads, we want to look at uh, uh, switching writes. So um, with this command, VTCTL client switch writes customer to commerce. We are going to switch the the writes also incoming writes to that. Right. So it actually, um, since there's no traffic, there's um, it's things are going super fast. Of course, this is not going to be the case at your uh, example. Okay. So we have a, a, a commerce uh, still, and um, at the state of serving, and uh, and then now that we switched, they're both serving, but actually all the reads and writes are going to the customer uh, key space. So we migrated into customer, but we did not actually. What we didn't do is uh, we haven't sharded this uh, space. We just prepared the topology to be able to uh, shard, and um, we can actually uh, uh, drop sources for the customer and um, for the for the commerce. And uh, and then we we can, we can clean up the uh, the commerce space. Okay, it's going to drop the tablets and uh, drop drop the tables for the um, uh, from the the source. Okay. So now that we want the uh, the shard the the customer space, and I want to take a look at that real quick. Um, it is going to uh, create a 
sequence for that. Now we have a concept of sequences, which it doesn't exist in, in our uh, MySQL MariaDB space in, in, in too much. Uh, but the sequences are required for the auto increment values. And this way, uh, the, the the test topology server and the VT gate can control uh, the auto increment values that goes into these this sharded environment. And um, and then we run this, it will apply the the, the sequences and it, it will create the V schema uh, for that. And um, and it will apply the sharding scheme and it will create uh, the sharded uh, customer space. And uh, if you look at these, you can see uh, these files that will actually be looking like this. It will be creating a table, customer sequence, and um, which is going to be um, a Vitesse sequence uh, category. Okay, so we will be uh, running uh, the customer sharded. And now that we created uh, the customer sharded environment uh, that is ready for, for our sharding. So if you look at the schema objects that are created, there's going to be two sequences created, one for customer, one for the order. And then the schema objects that are created for um, sharded scheme that's on hash and uh, and customer ID on hash. And uh, you can change that. And then you have the, uh, the column and the sequence ID, those are, those are attached to those uh, values so that Vitesse knows what the um, sharding scheme is, okay? Um, the next, uh, for this example, uh, the next one will be um, creating the new shards is going to be needed. All right. Let's take a look at that. Uh, it's going to create uh, the new shards for uh, for that. And uh, and this will be the shards and it will bring up those, those tablets with this. All right, and then it will initialize those uh, shard master uh, to the to the related uh, sharding scheme. Okay. Okay. All right, it, is, it has created those tablets. Those are probably coming up. Yes, we can see uh, the new tablets coming for the uh, sharded customer scheme. So uh, just to reiterate, we had a commerce key space that we actually switched over to customer, and then we started um, our, our sharding scheme against the, the customer key space, and then built uh, a cluster that is uh, running, that is going to be uh, sharded against the customer. All right, so, so the new shards are created. Um, all right. So now within the, the customer space, we need to reshard uh, from the uncharted uh, customer's key space to a sharded customer key space. Okay. Run that example over here. All right. So uh, we were able to reshard that. And then we, what we want to do is we want to switch the reads to the new sharded uh, customer space. Okay. And uh, we also want to switch the rights to that customer space by the traffic switcher over here. Okay. All right, now that we have switched, the primary customer uncharted key space is no longer serving, and uh, the, the the switch has, has been made over to this. So, um, okay, and um, so now now uh, we can basically get rid of that um, uncharted customer space and and delete that. We no longer need that, and it's going to delete those tablets and free them up. And um, that's it. I wish we had more time to, to play with the data. We don't have too much data to show, and there's also a visual example of this. Uh, again, please visit uh, Vitesse IO website under uh, user guides. Uh, there's more comprehensive um, uh, steps and in implementation for this. And um, again, find me on Vitesse Slack or, or Twitter or, or uh, other medium to um, ask questions, uh, maybe even contribute. Thank you very much for listening.